Good evening. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, August the 21st. Uh, we will be singing a few songs. We'll observe the Lord's Supper and we hopefully will have a message for you that will be both beneficial and edifying uh, to each one of you. We sing from our song books, uh, songs of faith and praise and so i will give you the number of the song and i will also give you the name so that if you have a different book or some kind of device where you can get the uh song why you can do so the first song is number 435 435 the title is come into his presence come into his presence <clears throat> Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voices raise, your voices raise. Give glory and honor and power unto him. Jesus, the name above all names. Number 991. 991, the title of this song is, This is My Father's World. <clears throat> this is My Father's World. 991. <clears throat> this is my father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. <clears throat> This is my Father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees and skies and seas is and the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world. The birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, he shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. All oh, that me ne'er forget, that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is a ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus, who died, shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Before we take the Lord's Supper, number 366, by Christ redeemed. 366, by Christ redeemed. <clears throat> by, 
By Christ redeemed in Christ restored, we keep the supper of the Word and show the death of our dear Lord until He His body given in our stead is seen in this memorial bread. And as we drink, we see the blood until he comes. And thus that dark betrayal night With the last advent we unite By one bright chain of loving right Until he comes we are instructed on the first day of the week to gather about the Lord's table, as it tells us in the 20th chapter of Acts in the seventh verse. They did that specifically each first day of the week. It was one of the central points of gathering together that uh, as Jesus uh, instructed on the night in which he was betrayed when he gathered around the table with his disciples, as Paul reiterated in the 11th chapter of first Corinthians, they gave us the instructions and they let us know how we were supposed to do this. We were supposed to remember the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The memorial is the bread and the fruit of the vine, which represents his body that he gave for us. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that your divine plan was to send Jesus to us that in his magnificence, that he was willing to give up his physical body here on earth and that he suffered great agony. And he did that for each one of us as we partake of the bread. Let's help remember the body that hung on that cross. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We know that, dear Heavenly Father, that as we drink this fruit of the vine, we remember the blood that Jesus shed, the innocent, pure Jesus that gave himself up, that the, the very blood that kept his body alive flowed from his body. And as we partake of this cup, help us to remember the power that is in the blood the power to forgive, the power that will uh, be able to forgive us of our sins and wash them away so that we can one day live with you. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper, but also on the first day of the week, we are required to lay by in store and give back to the Lord that with which we have been blessed and prospered. I pray that all of us have uh, this in our plans each week, that we would uh, remember that uh, uh, we give back to the Lord what is his and that uh, we pray that those that utilize the money within our church will use it to further your work and to help those less fortunate than us. Let's pray as we give. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're so blessed that we're able to give. Help us to be as the widow who gave those two small coins into the treasury that she gave and she sacrificed as she gave. That's part of our giving, isn't it? that we sacrifice. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to sacrifice, to give back to you what is yours. We pray this in his most holy name. 
Amen. And if you turn your songbook to number 763. Seven sixty-three. O Master, let me walk with thee. Seven sixty-three. <clears throat> o Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me, the slow of heart, to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way, what be to stay, and guide them in the homeward way. In hope that sends a shining ray, for down the future's broadening way, in peace that only thou canst give with thee, O Master, let me live. I know that uh, I enjoyed the song service. I know the Lord was praised. And I know that it's very, very important for us to sing the praises of our great God. If you were there this morning, you heard that the uh, title of my lesson uh, this evening is The Gift of God. If you have your Bibles with you, if you would turn them to Revelation chapter 21, Revelation 21, verse 3. Revelation 21, verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of his, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Isn't that a, a wonderful scripture that, uh, we have this promise, uh, that our God will dwell with us. You know what? Whatever secondary, I guess we might call them, blessings that uh, flow from God, we ought to seek none other as diligently as we seek God himself. We should be all about each day of our lives seeking God to make sure he is that integral part of our lives that he ought to be. We must be those uh, who seek God primarily. And let's remember this, for his sake, because he is our God. And we long, we absolutely long to give ourselves to him. We want to give ourselves to God. So what is this about the gift? Are we giving a gift to God or is God giving gifts to us? You know what? We oughtn't seek God for the material blessings that he might bestow upon us. Uh, selfishness and manipulation are nowhere more out of place than in our relationship with our God. And selfishness in that vein would actually be self-defeating. If we are truly 
if we are truly concerned only with the other things God can give us, we'll miss the greatest gift of all. A great man once said, God's chief gift to those who seek him is himself. God's chief gift to those that seek him is himself. So, when we speak of the gift of God, we should think of God in two ways both as the giver and as the gift. We should think of him as both the giver and the gift. We know we have that wonderful story of the Samaritan woman at the well. And in John chapter 4, verse 10, to her, Jesus said, If you knew, get this, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. For we have gifts flowing back and forth here, don't we? If you knew the gift of God, Jesus said, then who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would give you living water. There's the great gift or one of the great gifts. One of the great gifts is the living water. It's the living water that only comes with a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so, what is living water that only God can give? Let's turn to the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, where he says, The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the big gift. Uh, we I had a sermon last week that talked about going for the gold. You know, uh, we equated it to athletes who are trying to win the prize, perhaps like in the Olympic Games where gold represents the first place. And we had that wonderful Hebrew scripture that says, let us lay aside everything that would keep us uh, from reaching our goal and run with endurance the race that is set before us. Why? Because we want the gift. We want to go for the gold. And the gift, according to the Apostle Paul, is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Isn't it a wonderful, almost a, a motto for us, a credo for us, that we are looking for the eternal life that only comes. And as Paul said, the gift is eternal life. All right? Now, in John chapter 17, and verse 3, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he prayed. And here are some of the words of that prayer. That is in John chapter 17, verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so what he says here is that he wants believers to know both God and his son, who God sent to us. 
God gives us life by giving us himself. We just observed the Lord's Supper. Jesus sacrificed the one perfect and pure sacrifice one time for all. And the end point is that we would get to spend eternity with him. He gave his life up for that. And the power of God was manifest that on the third day, God rose Jesus from the tomb. That God took Jesus and brought him back to life again. He appeared to uh, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary. He appeared to the disciples. He appeared later on to Thomas. He appeared to many, many people. Jesus rose from the dead. And the significance in that is that we also can have a resurrection of life. This is what we are looking for. We are looking for that great gift, that great, great gift of eternal life. Now, uh, God gives us life by giving himself. Now, other blessings may flow from a right relationship with God. And, and we pray for those blessings. We pray for him to be with the sick. We pray that God will comfort those who have lost loved ones. However, but the relationship we have with God is the greatest gift of all. If we have God and we have his son, we have the highest thing to which we can aspire. And the only way we can have eternal life, the only hope of eternal life that we have is in that relationship with God and with his son. It's the highest thing to which we can aspire. John in second John verse nine said this, he who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. You know what? It's almost as if it's too good to be true. <laughs> Even when we try with all of our might to appreciate what God should mean to us, we can hardly grasp the glory and grace of a God who would give himself up to such a people. God didn't send Jesus into a perfect world. At the very right time, he sent Jesus into a sinful world that he might give people the ability to overcome sin that he might give people the ability to uh, not have that sin in their lives and to resist sin, to resist temptation. But when they do yield to have the opportunity to repent and have those sins forgiven, it would take a hard, hard, hard heart to not be moved by Jesus' simple words in John chapter 14, verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Too good to be true? It is. But the fact of the matter is that it is true. These are true words. I didn't make them up. These are Jesus' words. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home 
with him. And more glorious than that, when our life is up here on earth, we will have the opportunity to live with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit forever and ever and ever. A uh, theologian by the name of Julian of Norwich said these words, and I'm going to read them and quote them. God, of your goodness, give me yourself, for you are sufficient for me. I cannot properly ask anything less to be worthy of you. If I were to ask less, I should always be in want, and you alone do I have all. That's what we are seeking. We are seeking the all in all that comes with a relationship with God and with Jesus. This is the gift. This is the gift of God. A relationship here in the kingdom of God, the church here on earth, so that one day we will have that eternal relationship with him in that eternal place that uh, uh, God has prepared for us. Isn't it wonderful? Just, just to think of those things, that uh, we can have God as our God. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall be their people. God himself will be with them, and be their God. It's what we aspire to. It's what ought to be our goal, to enjoy the gift of God. We can only enjoy the gift of God if we obey him into obedience, because a part of that relationship comes with obeying the truth of God's word, it comes by saying, I truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm sorry for the things that I did before. I want to repent of those sins. And most assuredly, I want to be baptized into the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost so that I can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, so I can start my Christian walk. It's so wonderful that we had the kingdom of God here on earth where we have brothers and sisters that will help us because we're on the walk with them. <clears throat> and so if you have not come to the Lord, this is your invitation. I know it's evening <clears throat> and I know that we are uh, speaking virtually. I'm speaking to you via YouTube, but uh, I'm real. The church is real. The waters of baptism are real. And if you need those, you have but to get in touch with us and we will help you in any way that we can. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for the time that we've had together this evening. I pray that you have accepted our songs of praise. I pray that we have observed the Lord's Supper the way you have shown us to. And I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that <clears throat> we will seek the great gift that only you have to offer, that of a relationship with both you and your son, so that we may one day live with you forever. Bless us as we try to achieve that goal, as we try to go for the gold, as we try to lay aside everything that would keep us from you and run with endurance the race that is set before us. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father, on this walk. Help us that the walk will come to the place that it's supposed to come to, to live with you eternally. Continue to be with us. Bless us. Comfort us. We just thank you for the many gifts that you give to us, especially that of a relationship with you. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. May God bless you and please be safe. In heavenly hall.